Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Chat here once again, and we're going to be talking about Be Somebody. I'm um, really looking forward to this conversation. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter, awesomecast.net to check out all the awesome chats and uh, talks and, and, and shows and everything going on there. A reminder, if you're catching this week, check out podcamppittsburgh.com. If it's too late, it's not really too late because all that streaming is going to be online at podcamppittsburgh.com. We'll be posting that over uh, the next few weeks, months, depends on how long it takes. And, uh, and of course, check out everything. Like I said, awesomecast.net. Subscribe to this and other feeds and, uh, and, and give us some feedback. Let us know about the, the what you think about the people we've been talking to and uh, who should we be talking to on the show uh, just generally looking for awesome people in and outside of Pittsburgh that we're coming across doing awesome things as you can see by the lineup uh, tonight we got uh, a, well first of all I, I got a co-host tonight this is unusual uh, Katie Dudas at K Dudders usually joins us for the awesome cast joins us tonight Hi guys. Well, you're actually the one that found tonight's app, mm-hmm. so it is appropriate that you're, you're you're joining us as well. Yes, this is an app I'm very excited about. So awesome, and also on the line from uh, is it Austin, Texas? Yep, Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Cash Shake from Be Somebody. You can check out BeSomebody.co or download the app. How are you doing tonight? Today, I don't know what time zone are you in. <laughs> we're, we're kind of on the border between day and night, so that was perfectly okay. So we're. Um, I'm doing awesome, of course, so I'm, I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here to talk with you guys. Awesome. Well, we've been playing with your app for a couple of weeks here since we talked about it on the Awesome Cast and uh, put a little bit of our convers- early conversation about it. Um, but uh, So tell us, what is Be Somebody uh, in general for those that haven't come across you yet? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of the background because Be sure. Somebody, I always say, you know, Right now, Be Somebody is a, the world's first mobile platform that connects people based on shared passion. And it's a platform where you can learn anything that you're passionate about by booking experiences with talented people around you who can teach you. Um, they teach you through experiences to, to learn anything from painting to playing piano to mountain biking to motocross. There's over 450 different experiences you can learn on the Be Somebody app. But... You know, I always say that the, that the biggest thing about Be Somebody is that it started so small because I started sharing the Be Somebody hashtag back in 2009. Wow. Uh, we're going about six years right now. Yeah, I grew up here in Austin and I went to school at UT down the road. And then I actually spent 10 years at Procter & Gamble, um, the largest consumer products company in the world. So I was in the corporate world for, for a long time. And, um, you know, I was leading marketing for brands like Old Spice and Tide. And um, about seven years in <clears throat> to my time at P&G, it was 2009. I, I just turned 30. I was going through a breakup. And, uh, you know, this girl, Andrea Thomas, we, all, we always say is the, the secret hidden co-founder of Be Somebody, but we just don't give her any stock options. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I was kind of going through a breakup. But, you know, you guys, I'm sure I, I can un- understand and empathize. Sometimes at the lowest parts of your life are where you really start to kind of find yourself because you start asking the right questions finally and I started trying to ask myself you know what my purpose was in life and what my passions were and I really started to try to focus on that and you know I would say as soon as you start to focus your mind and your heart your soul and your, your energy on your passion the universe starts to open up doors and unlock windows you never thought possible and uh, the first door that really got opened up for me was that Procter & Gamble created a role for me to lead social marketing for developing countries. Um, and at that time, developing countries at PMG was all of Latin America, South America, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Eastern Europe. So uh, for about a two-year period from 2009 to 2011, I was on the road 80% of the time internationally, traveling to all these different countries, meeting these different people, and doing a lot on the professional side that helped me move up quickly at PMG. But it was the personal side that really started to change my life. You know, all, all the, like I said, the conversations I would have with the people, the culture that I was beginning to, to be immersed in. I got to visit 43 countries in that two-year period. And I was just so inspired by what I was seeing and experiencing and really starting to understand some of the universal truths of life that, you know, we're all a lot more similar than we are different. Mm-hmm. You know, and we all kind of laugh and smile and cry at the same things. And everything that you've heard about or you thought you knew 
about people over there in the media and, and growing up, you realize a lot of that isn't true. We're all, we're all you know, similar. And, and passion is a universal language. And I started to get inspired by that, and I started to write about it because writing is one of my passions, probably my purest passion. And um, I started to write about it, and I started to share it on social media. And that was when, you know, 2009 was when Twitter was starting to get popular. And I used to always write little anecdotes, share photos, and I would always drop this somebody hashtag at the end of every post because it was, this was kind of like the term or the word that I used with my boys, you know. It was kind of our term, whether I was like doing better at work or working hard at the gym or talking to the girl at the bar. I was always, you know, be somebody. And it was kind of that stamp that we would put on everything. And I started to stamp all these stories and experiences with be somebody. I started getting a bit of a following from it on social media. And then over time, people started to tell me, man, you should write a travel blog or you should write a marketing blog or create something with these stories. And I, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to create the Be Somebody blog. And it's just going to be about these real and raw stories and experiences and emotions and feelings that I'm feeling while I'm traveling and while people, the people all over the world are feeling. And um, so in 2011, January 2011, my brother and I created the Be Somebody blog. It was just this basic WordPress, all white blog with typewriter font where we would just share these stories. And, um, you know, over time, like over a year, it started to gradually grow from a few hundred to a few thousand. And then we started getting into the tens of thousands of people following the blog, reading the blog, connecting. And I always believe that there's power in words, but there's something about this term of be somebody that just connects with people literally all over the planet. You don't have to explain it kind of abstract but intuitive and it's instantly personal with people. When they hear the term be somebody, you start thinking about whatever it is that you want to be, whatever it is that you love, what you're passionate about. And that's what was so powerful with it. And um, I knew that there was something there. I didn't really know what the hell it was or what we were going to do with it. <laughs> um, and as soon as it started to grow, I got this opportunity at the end of 2011 to leave P&G to go lead social and marketing for GoPro. Um, you know, the camera company. And when I went to GoPro, it was actually a, a, a two-story white cottage on the edge of the Pacific Ocean in Half Moon Bay. Wow. Um, you know, it's a company run by surfers, and actually Half Moon Bay is one of the best surf spots in the world. So that's what they always tell you in the tourist guides, but they don't tell you in the fine print that it's actually one of the densest populations of great white sharks as well. <laughs> um, so... They told me that as I was walking into the beach, my first time to go uh, surf in Happen Bay, and I literally turned around and walked back out the <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going in there. I'm from Texas. I'm a brown boy from Texas. The shark is going to bite me first. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, at, at P&G, I learned about brand building and, and business fundamentals and values and how to scale a brand around the world. I mean, really big brands, but... At GoPro, I learned about how to build a brand from the bottom up, grassroots, you know, and I always tell my team, pro deals instead of pro deals, because we made stuff happen on high fives and handshakes and a community, you know, and, it, and, and the camera was kind of like almost the afterthought. It was, it was about the content that we were creating that was inspiring, but it was also about this community that was sharing this passion and this scope for life. And, you know, I started to get... We were able to make GoPro the fastest growing camera company in the world in about a year. We passed Sony. And I started to get this vision of building a brand and a platform in a way no one had really tried it before. And instead of starting with a product and selling something, I wanted to start with passion and content and community and grassroots experiences and let the world decide what this powerful term of be somebody meant to them. You know, because I knew some people, for some people, was podcasting and, and video production there's some people's running some people's motocross and skydiving and that's what was so badass about it i was like if we could scale this and let people build this brand and this platform for us a true brand of the people then we'd be building something you know that was very powerful and so basically in march of 2013 i became the first person to resign in gopro history you know, left 75 percent of my stock on the table um <laughs> Cashed out my 401k, sold all my furniture, moved out of my condo in San Francisco, moved back to Texas where my family and my brother was here in Austin. Um, actually ended up living in Pflugerville, which is north of Austin because the rent was a hell of a lot cheaper. <laughs> and, uh, 
living a little, you know, kind of the startup story, living in a little 600 square foot studio apartment, the only furniture that we had actually, you guys, I don't know if this is illegal or not, but were these whiteboards, mm -hmm. we used these three whiteboards ourselves from Home Depot because of because it was cheaper, <laughs> and we built these three whiteboards, and we basically scoped out a plan of where we wanted to go, who we wanted to talk to, how we wanted to build the movement or be somebody. And long story short, over 18 months we went, um, we traveled 75,000 miles, literally about three trips around the world. We went to 15 different countries. We did a, a global street art um, campaign where we did inspirational murals be uh, somebody across the world in 15 cities in 11 countries in four and a half weeks. Actually, we're building our new office right now, and behind me is a replica of what we painted in Paris. Um, wow. I, this is one of my favorite pieces. We did the theme is love, and uh, we painted we painted these beautiful murals all across the world. We did fitness competitions, we did music festivals, all for free. We wow. spoke at schools. You know, we spoke at over uh, almost 200 schools across the world. We did a college tour. We went to 25 schools in 50 days. I drove a really beat up 42 foot long be somebody RV that looked really cool on the outside because we wrapped it in all black, but it was a piece of crap on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> no air conditioning, no, no heater, broken toilets. But there were six of us that went on this tour around the country speaking to schools, all just to try to inspire people to do what they love and follow their passion. And and basically, during this journey, we used to ask people, I used to ask people two questions. I would say, what do you do? And they would tell me one thing. And then I'd be like, but what do you love? And they would tell me something totally different. And, you know, and, and, and every time I'd be like, man, why, why, are you, why don't you do that? You should do that, bro. You should do what you love. And nine times out of ten, what they would tell me is that I can't make money off of it. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. you know, I, lo I love it, but I can't make a living off of it. So it's, you know... I can't do it right now, you know? And, and that's when I was speaking to, like, adults. You know, I'm, I'm, I just turned 35, so people in their 20, 25 to 40-year-old range I was speaking to. And then when we started talking to kids at colleges and high schools and middle schools across the world, I started – I would give a 20-minute talk on passion. And then for the rest of the 40 minutes of this hour-long assembly, I'd invite the kids to come up on the stage and share their passions with the whole school on this, you know, in this – assembly with a, holding a microphone with a camera on their face and these kids would just unleash this emotional storm of all the things that they love to do and all the things either holding them back or propelling them forward and it was these amazing sessions that you always have goosebumps on when you were sitting in and and nine times out of ten what these kids were talking about wasn't what they were learning in school every day you know it was actually all those things that all these people thought that they could make money you know doing Mm -hmm. I started to realize that it, it's not rocket science, but it is revolutionary. It would be revolutionary if we could create a single platform that can connect these people based on shared passion. We'd be building something that doesn't exist, you know? And we started to, and then when we got that idea, I really started to, to take notice of this economic revolution that's happening right now that you guys know really well with the work you guys do called the sharing economy, you know, the peer to peer economy. Companies like Airbnb and Uber, who are the figureheads and the leaders of that movement, um, you know, Airbnb and Uber are the two fastest companies to reach a billion-dollar valuation in history. It took four and a half years. That's five times faster than Apple, the world's most valuable company. And these companies are exploding by creating marketplaces that enable people to monetize their personal possessions. And it makes sense that the two marketplaces where you monetize the the two most expensive purchases you'll probably ever make in your life, your house or your car, are the two that are really exploding, you know? And and really the full circle moment for us is that we realize that, and, and you guys I know realize this too with, with the awesome cast and what you do, that, you know, your house or your car, or your clothes, or your jewelry, or anything in your closet or any toy in your garage is not your most valuable possession. You know, it's not your most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. What you love to do, your personal passion is by far your most valuable asset. You should be able to monetize it. You should be able to make a living off of it. But there's never been a marketplace that's enabled it. And that's what we built. You know? and, that, and that's the reason why we built it. We want to enable people to truly live their passion, to get rid of that, well, I can't make money doing it. You know? By creating a marketplace that enabled it, 
And the beautiful thing that happened as we were going through, actually, it's somewhat beautiful and somewhat unfortunate, is that we're in the midst of this educational shift, really an educational crisis right now, because there's a student debt crisis happening right now in this country, where last year was a record year of student debt of $1.2 trillion of student debt last year. It's going to be $6 trillion in five years. 70% of students graduating are graduating with significant debt. You know, 50% of college kids that are, that are getting a 3.0 or higher are unemployed or underemployed, meaning they didn't get the job that they studied for. You know, they, they maybe got a bachelor's in engineering and then maybe they're working at Starbucks or something, so they paid all this money for this degree. It's not paying out for them. Right, you know? right. And, and that's all happening right now. And we wanted to create a new path for people to learn where – if you know what you're passionate about, and if the traditional path isn't working for you, you can actually learn in the purest way and the best way to learn, which is from people around you. You know, I would say the three least inspiring words in learning are courses, classes, and curriculum. You know, the, the best way to learn is through experience with talented people around you. I could go, I could take a class at UT, which is a great university down the road, for a semester about podcasting. And I wouldn't learn half as much as I would learn in one day hanging with you guys, you know, mm -hmm. because you guys are really doing it. And that's how it used to be. You know, in the old days, if you want to be the best, if you want to be a blacksmith, you didn't go to Blacksmith University. You found the best blacksmith in town and you learned from me, you became an apprentice. And that's the way it still works in the arts. It still works in athletics. Talk about the Patriots, the Bill Belichick coaching tree. You know, it <laughs> works in music. You know, these are the people that get the great job and the great gigs. Kanye was an apprentice to Jay Z. You know, <laughs> like that's how things happen, but it's not happening in the other parts of the world that we all live in a lot, and that's what we want to change. That's what the one of the things when I first was looking at your app was the the, the you wanted to change essentially the education system because right. we. <clears throat> Both Sorg and I are are your age too, and we've been through. You know, I was a retail manager. I've been, you know, every kind of lower, you know, job that just was not where I wanted to be. And we did them for years. And then there was this expectation: you'd go to college, you come out, get a full time job, you'd get married, have kids, and blah blah blah. And here we are, you know, mid thirties, going, wow, that we didn't follow any of that plan. And 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 then we kind of like you take off and you start doing what you really enjoy, and it's like wait a minute, this is what I should have done, and this is what I should have been doing this whole time. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, you think about it, and, and Katie, you're exactly right, and, and that's what inspired me because I talked to so many people like us, and, mm -hmm. and I would be talking to people that were, were, you know, their 10th year as an accountant, and they hated their job. You know, they wanted to basically play piano or play the guitar the, for, for a living. They were talented in it, but the reason, one of the main reasons they were stuck and they were literally stuck because they had to pay off that debt, mm -hmm. you know? So they were anchored in this job that they hated just to pay off the debt for a major they never even wanted in the first place, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, man, what, what are we doing here? This, this, this is cycle needs to stop, you mm -hmm. know? And on the economic side, I really believe that student debt bubble is going to burst just like the, the housing market crash, just like the dot-com student loans are the easiest loans to get with the worst terms. People literally spend their whole life paying them off. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, and on the emotional side, I mean, a great story. Is I, was, I was speaking at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, and I was talking two years ago about – before we had the app or anything, like I knew we were going to build a platform. To be honest, I didn't know what the heck it was going to be until I left my job at GoPro and went out and just started trying to create it and listening to people and having these types of conversations. And I gave a talk on passion – um, out in Nebraska. And when I was done, this young kid came up to me. He was 21 years old, really good looking, six foot four, really built guy. His name was Nate Schimmel. And he was in tears. He was crying. And, and he was like, man, Cash, I love your talk about passion and following your passion. I love be somebody. You know, I, I, I want to live my life centered on my passion. And I was like, man, that's so cool, Nate. Like, that's awesome. Well, what are you passionate about? And, uh, and he goes, skydiving. And I was like, man, you know, I used to work at GoPro. Like, I work with the GoPro bomb squad, the best skydivers on the freaking planet. Man, I could connect you. Those are my friends. <laughs> and he was like, no way. You know the bomb squad? That's so cool. And I was like, yeah, Marshall Miller, Neil Amundsen, those are some of my good friends. I'm going to connect you. you know? And he's like, that would be so amazing. 
you know, and, and I go, well, Nate, I'm going to hook you up, but before I do, let me ask you something. You know, if I could connect you with Marshall Miller, the best skydiver in the freaking country, and you could learn to skydive from him, how much would you pay? Right? I said, how much you pay? And I don't even know why I asked that. Just that day, I just popped in my head and said, how much would you pay? And what he said, guys, blew my freaking mind. He said, how much am I paying for my college tuition? He said, I'm paying 30 grand a year to sit in classes I don't give a crap about to get a major I'm never going to use. He said, think about all the opportunity costs of me sitting here for four years, not getting better at what I really want to do. Mm-hmm. You know? All that time, money, resources, you know, emotional capital. He was like, if you could make that happen now, you could take it. You know? And it was a philosophical type of conversation. And I realized that that's not happening tomorrow. But I do believe... That is what's going to happen. That is the future, you know, because that's the way the world's growing. That's the way you know, our mindset's going. That's the way marketplaces are unlocking and enabling. Why spend that 30 grand a year to get that major you never want to use when you can spend a fraction of it to learn something that you really love? And the beauty of the, and I call it the passion economy, but the beauty of the passion economy, which is the evolution of the sharing economy, is that once you learn it, you then either become good enough to go pro at it, you know, and we've seen that in our uh, in our platform. One of our motocross riders is learning from a passionary. Now he's the top rider in the city. Or you become good enough to teach, and then you get paid to teach. You know, and it's a beautiful model because I would say teaching is the purest gift you can give to the world. Teachers are probably the, arguably the most undervalued profession. They're, they're underpaid, under undervalued across the world. Mm-hmm. On our platform, the best teachers make the most money, and and that's what's beautiful about it. Because uh, just thinking about that, and um, if if you could go and fill out an application without having to check that box, I have a four year degree, which could have right. absolutely nothing to do with the actual job you're going to be doing. But they always stick that little thing on the the, the application. I have a four year degree. Look at me, I've passed all these little uh, tests on your web, you know, on your on your um, your right. application just to get through. And, and I hate that. I absolutely hate that. It drives me insane that I have to have a four-year degree, four degree in anything. I could have a, a four-year degree in pottery and, and try to do a different job that had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Even more so, the uh, there's a certain school that I know we've talked about here yeah. off camera that it requires a master's to teach. And I'm like, I could probably teach mm-hmm. half of those classes there, you know, but I don't. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. All right, well, here's a, here's a funny thing. I mean, it's I, I do it a $5. It's only $5. I'm, I'm doing it more for the community and to kind of learn. I host a startup experience here in Austin. Austin's mm-hmm. a, one of the growing startup you know, capitals in the country. And I charge five bucks. It's usually pretty full every time I do it. You know, I, I cap it at 15 people and people come in and we talk entrepreneurship. We, sometimes I let people in on what we're doing for the whole day. They become a part of it. And, and every time we talk to these kids, and not just me, and I'm really just a nobody, you know, I'm just a guy trying to make it. Like, the kids will tell you that they learn way more in that session than they do in any of their classes studying the theory of theoretical entrepreneurship. You know, I met, I had the opportunity to meet Gary Vaynerchuk last month in, in New York, one of the great entrepreneurs in the country. And I talked to him about the same thing. I said, Gary, I mean, I could learn more in a day from you than I could in a whole mm-hmm. semester of, <laughs> of studying entrepreneurship, you know? So there's something in there. It's funny. When I worked at Procter & Gamble, I hired probably about, you know, 20 different people when I work there um, in some shape or fashion. And, and and it's funny, Katie, from what you said, because the, there's a like electronic filtering system when you got the, when you submit your application, mm-hmm. that they, they had to have a four year degree. They had to have certain majors to get past it to the human, you know, person who would see it or it wouldn't make it through. Mm-hmm. But, but the funny thing is whenever I saw a, a resume, I, I never hired anybody off a of resume. I never even looked at their major, you know, it, I, I, could, I didn't, could care less. And this is way before the be somebody times. So I always just looked at like, what have you done? You know, what is your experience? You know, because you know, you never use your major in, in, in your job. I mean, for the most part, there's some technical careers where it matters a lot, mm-hmm. obviously, but a lot of, you can talk to the best companies in the world, talk to Google, talk to Apple, talk to Procter and Gamble, the hiring philosophy is let's hire people that are leaders, that are great thinkers, that are great strategists, great problem solvers, great collaborators. It's not that they have a certain degree that makes them that way, you know? Mm-hmm. 
And I think that what you're talking about is some of the institutional practices that we're going to be going up against. Mm -hmm. We're learning now because now that we're growing faster, we're getting a little bit more opposition from like the traditional education system from traditional corporate structure. And I think we just know that that's, that's a, you know, what we're going to have to take on because there's so many things that are kind of entrenched in our society that are kind of stuck in that way of thinking. I would say the educational system is literally the least passion centric system in history. Uh, it's all about putting kids in boxes, standardized testing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most watched TED Talk of all time was Sir Ken Robinson in 2006. And he talked about 10 years ago that there needs to be a revolution in, in education because it sucks the creativity out of kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts to make them all the same. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants that anymore. And now we kind of have a generation behind us and with us kind of at the front end, our, our generation, mm -hmm. leading this charge to enable people to do something different. It is interesting, isn't it? Our, our generation is in the, uh, like, we're trying to turn the boat mm -hmm. uh, kind of yeah. halfway here because we've already had, you know, 10, 15 years, whatever the case, of the other way, right? Right. So, interesting. Well, well since we've been on the rap, the hip-hop theme all day, <laughs> yes. with, with Katie turning the music up in her headphones, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like that line from Jay-Z, and I forget the song, he said, it took me 35 years to find my path, my only job now is to cut your time in half. You know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's what I will say to, to, to younger people sometimes who are like, well, you, you actually went to college. You got pretty good grades. You went the corporate way. And now you're doing this. And I said, man, one, excuse the language, but if I had the balls to do this back then, I would have. I just didn't. Two, I was chasing the wrong things. I was chasing money and, and things that I was told I was supposed to be you know, fascinated by. Right. And I realized that. Uh, you know, at the end when I left GoPro, I was making really good money, but it didn't make me happy. It made me heavy. You know, I went, I went to work every day. I could literally feel the heaviness on me because I knew I wasn't doing what I truly wanted to do, you know. And and now we have an opportunity with the passion economy to enable people to have to make a living doing what they love. So that's what I always tell people is like, you know, we kind of learned the hard way. And now we have opportunity to help people before they make that that decision of where they want to spend their time, their money, and their energy. You know, I love that we we're, we're about a half an hour into this, and we've barely talked about the app. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. You know, I, the app is the app. Is, see, here's the thing: the app is an amazing tool, and I right. believe it's a world changing tool. But it is a tool. Be somebody is is way bigger than the app. It, it, it's about you and what you love, and about following your passion. And it's a motivational movement that. It now has a tool because most movements, I mean, you can't, I, I can't think of any that gave you a tool that you can utilize every day to truly live what that movement embodies. And for us, it's passion. So um, be somebody bigger than the app. The app is going to be the game changer, we believe, in enable people to, to do what they love, though. So, so we can talk about it. We should talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm... I'm was telling my mom about this app. I usually tell her what I'm talking about on the show because she's very interested in, in what I'm, I'm talking about and what's going on in the world. And I was telling her about this app and, and she was like, well, I don't, you know, what, I, I don't think I could offer anything because I, and I was explaining to her, I said, you know, looking down at the opportunities here, anybody can offer some, everybody can offer something. She's like, but I don't right. think there's anything I can offer. And literally that day I had asked her earlier, I was like, can you remind me how to twirl a baton? Because I was doing an event where I was, twirling a baton for <laughs> entertainment and uh, at the, this past game the gaming thing we just did this weekend and she was like oh yeah and she's just like bloop, 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 bloop. like she she had never forgotten it and i was like mom that's something that is something you obviously enjoy that people would love to learn like hula hooping i mean there's just like these amazing niches of things that people know that they think is you know absolutely worthless but there are people who want to learn it and that i find it fascinating Right. And you know what? That's, and that's one of the most amazing things that's happened since we started because we basically did a beta launch. We had six months of beta testing here at Austin. And, and on, the, on the outside, we didn't really change much from – we didn't change at all from the vision. And we didn't change much of the structure. But on the inside, we had so many little pivots and iteration changes based on insights like that. Because when we launched, for example, we only had 40 – passion areas. Mm -hmm. We kind of handpick four, 40 passions across four different verticals of adventure, art, fitness, and music. And we thought that would be perfect for Austin. We handpicked the passion areas who were the teachers you know, or instructors on our platform. Mm -hmm. We handpicked them and we had this like kind of finite world of passion that we defined. 
And literally the first week, everybody was like, why isn't baton twirling on there? Why isn't <laughs> like, why is it, you know, abstract art on there? And just different things that we didn't have. And we were, and what we, the, the biggest change we made, which was, which was huge for us to do at the time, and we're still trying to figure out how to, cap, you know, encapsulate mm-hmm. it all, is that we completely opened up the platform. So now, you know, you can add any passion area. I, I don't know if the time for it. I wouldn't be surprised if it is because we're getting over 100 passions added a week. Wow. And, Oh, just, oh, 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 by the way, I, I have to. I have to. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but baton twirling is certainly. Hold on, <laughs> is definitely in here. Woohoo! <laughs> yes, that's there. Awesome. It is. <laughs> you gotta tap it. Let's see the color when you tap it. All right. So it's. Uh... All right. I tapped it. Now what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. See, you get to check it. Check it, and, and now it's in your. Now we put it into your algorithm of passion. So, nice. so what's what's cool is um, what we started to realize is that you know there's so many there's so many different niche passion areas, mm-hmm. and we don't want to limit it. So what's happened is one, anybody be, can become a passionary now. We don't handpick. You can become a passionary straight from your phone. We do verifications of IDs. We do background checks all from your phone. Um, and then once you get started, you can create and manage your experiences from your phone, which is really you can run your business because the Passionary is an independent business owner on our platform. You can manage your whole business right from your, your iPhone. And then the other thing we did is we enabled people to add any passion. Like I said, we went from 400 to almost 1,000 now. We opened up our platform at the end of April, so it's only been a few months where this has been happening. And what's happened is we've been getting, just like you guys said, these all these niche passion areas and each community is coming together. For example, you know, when we first launched Papa Roach, the band was, was one of our fastest growing passions. Then beekeeping was a fast growing passion because they started adding um, a community together. But this past week, our fastest growing passion area is pottery um, because a group of, 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 I don't even know what it's called, local potters? <laughs> you know, I don't want to say like a group of potheads, but yeah. a group of you know, <laughs> A group of people passionate about pottery added the app, got got excited about it, started sharing it on social media. So pottery experiences and passions that went through the roof this week. So that's what's cool about it. The challenge for us now is, for example, baton twirling. There's probably not a lot of content yet about mm-hmm. baton twirling. So if you select, or if your mom selects that passion, we need to somehow we need to somehow give her you know content. And experiences that were related to baton twirling until that one could fully kind of develop. So we had to create a back end hierarchy and a back end algorithm that said, oh, if you're if you're in a baton twirling, you might be into guitar as well, or maybe you're into cheerleading, maybe you're into dance. And we show you that content and we show you experiences that are related to that. And that's to me been the most exciting kind of stuff that I geek out on because I'm like, man, it's so cool to see this threads of passions and how they're all connected. And, you know, maybe we can show somebody who's into the contouring some other type of, like, dance that, that they never knew about that now they're going to go learn and they're going to be passionate about. And that's what's really cool. You know, and that, that's interesting because, you know, there's some things you mentioned there, because I think the first uh, the first thought on this is it's like a fiver or something where it's like, oh, this is the stuff that I'm into. And now I can turn a thing and make money off of it. Right. Uh, but but you're mentioning things like 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 the, I noticed like at the top list is like 30 seconds to Mars. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. But it is yeah. kind of a grander kind of concept than that. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I always say we're, we're building a social marketplace. Mm hmm. Uh, we've got 75% of our, of our app is all social. Adding your passions, um, any type of passion area, is it's free. You know, Explore, which is our content feed. So there's, there's basically four main areas to the app. Your passion flame, where you add passions or, or edit passions or swap and toggle between passions. That's the flame on the very left. And and what when you, if you tap that flame right now when you're doing it, our algorithm takes everything that you've had and we feed you content experiences and people that are related to that. The second part of the, of the app, the second button there is explore. And when you tap the explore feed, now you get a content feed that's all passion related content to the people that are closest to you. And, and to be honest, I mean, it's so exciting to me that you guys are on the app in, in Pittsburgh and it's growing so fast because right now we're only live with our experience marketplace here in Austin. 
it's only been a couple months, but now we're seeing experiences just pop up all across the country because people are kind of taking the initiative on their own. Um, but what's cool is, you know, we're, as we grow, that marketplace is going to grow much bigger. But the explore feed, that's sharing photos and, and you tag it with the passion. And I would say it's like Instagram without all the crap. Like if you can see whatever you want to see from who you want to see it. And if you tap the filters in the top left, you can customize your, 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 uh, the content feed. You can like and comment just like on, on Instagram. So that's all social. Um, and if you go back, the third button is called discover. And this is where you find people around you that share your passion. And, you know, when you go to discover, it's actually a map of everyone around you that shares your passion now. So if you go, if you, if you zoom out and go to Austin, because you can zoom in and out of that map. I'm just looking at it. If you zoom out, you'll start. You'll see kind of where where we're really located here. Mm -hmm. uh, and every every circle is a zip code, and within that zip code is a number. And those are the people in that zip code that share your passions. And it's all you know. This is all part of the social aspect. Just connecting with those people. Yeah, you can tap a tap a. a a circle, find the people in it. You can tap that. If you go back and tap that photo at the top, you can toggle to this photo mode and you can literally swipe. People have been calling it Tinder for passion. You can, type, you can tap the photo mode. Oh, there's my dog. That's my dog. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. So you can swipe to the left and you can literally find people in that area that share your passion. Um, you know, and, and as you swipe, you can connect with them. You can message them. You can send them a you know, you can send them a spark to, to connect with them. And all this is free, and it's all cool because all these people are to share your passion. And there's people that'd be great to have connections with and relationships with them. Um, and that's the social part of the app, and that's why people are, are loving it and growing. It's growing fast because you actually can use it when the marketplace isn't even packed yet mm -hmm. in your city. Um, it kind of and for us from a strategic standpoint, it kind of almost primes the marketplace for us because we get people in cities like LA is growing really fast. Houston's growing really fast. Um, Cincinnati is growing really fast. So we're getting areas where people are excited using the app. And then, you know, when we're ready, we can launch the marketplace. Um, and then the last, the last part of the, the app is unleash and that's the marketplace feed. That's the last button. And when you tap that, you basically get a feed of experiences that are, that are closest to you. So since you guys are in Pittsburgh, you'll see stuff in New York. And I haven't even seen some of these. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. I, I pulled up cosplay photo shoot, $225. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you could literally, so based on your passion, you see things that are, that are close to you. You can tap on it just like you did. Um, you know, there's mine. There's one of mine. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We're on a bit of a delay. Oh, there you are. Yeah. So basically, you can swipe back. If you go to my startup experience, actually, you know what's cool? I'm doing an astronomy experience. I don't know if you're into astronomy, though, so you might not see it. So if you go to the – here, I'll show you how to – go to the filter to the top left. Okay. If you, tap, if, you, if you select all passions, okay. that'll make it – that'll give you a broader look at literally everything. Oh, so the top left. And now you'll see everything available. So now you – when you get back down to me, I'll show you something that's pretty cool that we're hosting tomorrow. That I'm hosting tomorrow night. See, now I'm further down there because we're showing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. There's the astronomy. Yeah, I'll, I'll pop up there probably next. Yeah. So when you do that, I'm actually hosting. There's a Percy meteor shower. You guys know about this? Yes. It's, no. like the most epic, it's the most epic light show freaking of the year. And there's a new moon tomorrow, so it's going to be less light that's blocking these meteor sharp these meteors you can see hundreds like fireballs in the sky an hour so i'm hosting astronomy experience on the deck of our hq where i'm going to show people the constellations in the sky give them a little bit of input on the you know on the meteor shower and we're going to take them this awesome astronomy experience it's not wake surfing it's not motocross it's a total science-based passion that i have that shows you the diversity and the and kind of the the at the breadth of what you can host on the platform, when you tap on the experience like you did, you get a full experience detail, and the passionary controls this. So I uploaded all this myself on my phone. I, the passionary decides what the experience is, where it is, how much it is. You set the price for it. You put the location. You can you can actually scroll down and see a map. 
Oh. Um, get directions for it. You can you can wish list it by hitting uh, the heart and favorite it, and then you can read reviews. And when you're ready, you just tap book experience. And um, you know when you book the experience, it goes to a can uh, a calendar, and you literally just pick the date. And since this is a once one time thing, you'll know there's one date available. There's one date. Technically tomorrow night or technically Thursday morning, but it's one in the morning tomorrow night. It's the late experience. But, uh, or two, two in the morning, your time. You know, you can just tap it. Yeah, book it for both of you guys. Hit next. and <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> if your credit card's in there, then it will it'll just take you to the conf- confirmation screen. If you haven't put in your credit card, you'll put in your credit card once, just like Uber, and you'll go from there. And as soon as you book it, you know, I, I, as a passionary, I have 24 hours to confirm or reject your experience. Um, and as soon as I confirm it, then your credit card's charged and the, and the payment goes through. Cool. We hold that payment in escrow until after the ex- experience. And then just like Uber, we both rate each other. You rate me as a passionary. I rate you as a participant. As soon as both people are done rating and everything is cool, no flags or no no-shows, then the passionary gets paid. That's awesome. We deposit directly into their bank account. Yeah, it's really seamless and really easy. And it helps us kind of regulate the marketplace, helps the community build the marketplace because you have to rate each other. If anyone drops below a 4.0 rating, you take them off the platform. You really have the best teachers all around you. That's great. I love this. I love this app. So, so how long has this part uh, in Austin be, been uh, been open? Well, the, the marketplace, we, we just got out of beta at the beginning of June, so it's not been that long. Okay. Uh, you know, so we, we've had over 30, we have close to 30,000 downloads. We've got about, um, I'd say about 15,000 active users here in Austin. We've got more users that are growing across the country, the other half. And our goal right now is to basically continue to build and expand the marketplace in Austin. And then this fall, we're starting expanding outside of, the, outside of Austin to we're working on Houston and Dallas right now because we're obviously it's close from, from here and we can kind of manage that. But then we're also looking on the West Coast and the East Coast and you know and also following kind of the breadcrumbs and the trail for where our, our markets are growing. So if you guys mm-hmm. can help us get people excited about us in Pittsburgh, maybe we can all grow it there because everybody I believe can benefit from a marketplace like this. The biggest thing we need to do is find the people that are willing to teach. You know? mm-hmm. It's interesting. So, 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 really, even without the marketplace, I mean, it is good to just find other people into things around me, right? So, exactly. as long as people start building that up now, I've been kind of, I'm already kind of, you know, the kind of stuff I'm sharing on here, I'm the kind of person I'm already sharing, like, you know, kind of video and and what I'm into on Instagram. So, I'm kind of transposing that over to this community as well. Um, so, so I'm already kind of building a little bit to it. So, I, I guess that that kind of starts it off pretty decently, right? Right. Right. Did you add us? Did you add a new passion, or were all the passions you wanted already in the app? Um, I kind of kept it light because I wasn't sure if this is a oh, just put everything you're into, or just the things you're into doing something with. You know, like like I don't know how, how I wasn't entirely sure how granular to go with it. Should I just put everything in there? Is a, should I go look for comic books and pro wrestling while I'm at it, or should I just deal with you, or 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 do I just stick with the professional things like video and podcasting that I'm actively already kind of pursuing right well it's great i mean you know it's a great question mm-hmm. that's another thing we kind of screwed up because when when, <laughs> when we started this like i really thought everybody would pick like their one main passion and that's right. how my mind was yeah even though even though i knew myself i have a passion for entrepreneurship and for writing and for running and all these different things astronomy i was just thinking as one and then we quickly learned that users by on average are selecting eight passion areas Okay. So we're like, wow, people will want to put a lot. I mean, some people have 250 passions. You know, <laughs> the thing. Um, so it's really up to you. But what's cool is if you, anytime you see a passion filter on the app, like if you're in your passion plane, if you just swipe it to the left, you can actually see who created the passion, which is really cool because that person is kind of like the OG of that passion. So if you're into podcasting, you can swipe podcast, see who created it. Oh, okay. And you can tap on that person's name and you and you can be like, oh, that person created a podcast. And like, that's pretty cool. Maybe I want to connect with him or her. And, you know, definitely, you know, that person, Greg over there is definitely passionate about podcasts. So you guys should connect. You should spark with him because you should be watching your show. You know what I mean? So Okay. And, and then spark, 
And Spark is kind of like a follow, right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Spark is our is our word for friending. So it's basically okay. like friending somebody. Um, we have one more um, update to our app that's pretty significant. It's the last one before we move on to Android. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's our last update for Spark. So our, in our next version of the, of the app, you're actually going to be able to see how many Sparks everybody has. You're going to be able to see what shared Sparks that you have. And that was the one term that, you know, if you if you read App Building 101, they'll say don't create your own terms. Just use friends because that's what Facebook uses and that's what everybody knows. But there's sentimental value between Spark. That's kind of where I started the, the blog, our blog I used to I used to end every post with be the spark with our share icons and, mm -hmm. and this idea of sparking passion, igniting that flame with passion with people. So we kept that term spark, but really it's just about friending somebody. And mm -hmm. then when you spark with someone, you see their content in your feed and you're able to send them messages and group messages. And, and we're really excited about the last update for spark, which is going to come out at the end of this month, because that's going to be like the final piece to build really this social marketplace. And I really think that's good that you are going to be stoked about that. Awesome. Uh, Katie, based on what we were just discussing here, it uh, looks like for baton twirling, you really need to connect with Amanda in uh, Williamstown, Kentucky. Okay. So I'll make sure you get that. Here you go. <laughs> Let's be friends. That's awesome. It, it's, really crazy. It's, it's really crazy when you're like, man, nobody's going to be passionate about this. And you type it into the app and you're like, oh, crap, somebody is, you know? Yeah. Cause and that's what cool. I, 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 our crowd, <laughs> our social circle is especially diverse. I, you know, we know fire twirlers, we know hoopers, we know, you know, makeup artists, we, you know, anything across the board. We, it's funny because we know, you know, video games and, and it just, it's amazing that you could, even the social aspect of just kind of seeing somebody else out there being like, wait a minute, they think this is cool too. And I, I like that part of it too. So you're not so much thinking, I, I like the, the inclusion part of it, that you're not thinking, oh, you know, I'm kind of weird with this, you know, but no, there's other people passionate about this too. That's awesome. Um, uh, right. One of my favorite uh, messages I got from after we launched the app was from from a 15-year-old in Russia that was passionate about paramotoring and he found somebody here in Austin and the guy here in Austin is Brian West that, that was a passionate for paramotoring. And, and in the beginning, they were literally the only two people that had paramotoring as a passion, you know, in our first month or whatever. But they were messaging and connecting, and it was like, a, you know, a 35-year-old professional connecting with this young young kid that really wanted to learn and become a paramotor pilot. If you don't know paramotoring, it's basically like strapping a motorcycle engine on your back and flying across the sky with the wing. That's amazing. And, yeah. Uh, so it was pretty cool. And now there's obviously there's thousands of them. We've added paramotoring since we've grown, but that was one of the coolest things because you know both people messaged me, and, and Brian was like, "Man, it's so cool that I'm literally just talking to this kid from Russia who's so into paramotoring. And we're so like vibing out on each other right now, and it, you know, I never had that ability to do that. I had nowhere to find him, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I always say the, the world isn't organized by passion. You know? mm -hmm. That was always one of my frustrations. I realized that Facebook, even. Google, the algorithms that power the world, they weren't, they weren't centered on passion. If we could reorganize our, our world and be somebody on passion, whether it's content or people or experiences, then you really start to have this really amazing lifestyle by connecting with people that share your passion, share that energy. It's positive. It's fueling what you want to do in your life. And, and that's really what be somebody's about. Awesome. And I, I have to be honest with you, I, when I was doing some research on you, and I'm sure you've heard this, I was nervous to talk to you because I was like, man, this guy sounds very cocky and very, <laughs> I, to be honest, and it was like, when I was looking into this, I'm like, wow, I, I you know, I, I'm going to see how this goes. And, and, but you are really a cool guy who believes wow. in, um, it's not just, because when you're like, be somebody every day, be somebody every day, and it's such a pressure to put on yourself. But you know what? And, and I was like, oh man, this guy's going to be intense and this is going to be hard. And But you're really a cool guy and, and the whole thing is, like just speaking with you, it's like, wow, I like it so much more. Because I went from, oh, I love this app to, wow, this everybody's like a little too like, rah, it's like CrossFit. Please don't take that wrong if you're into CrossFit. But that is what it comes, it was like, oh, this is kind of cultish. And now I'm reading, you know, talking to you and hearing more about it and where it's come from. It's just like, wow, this is really just an inclusion app where you know a social inclusion app where you can learn things like that's mm -hmm. it, it's almost like 
the the learning things is not i don't want to say secondary but it's 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 not the primary thing it's it's it, there's so much more than that and I, and it's really awesome right i mean well i appreciate that you know i you be somebody that's what i would say it's about you it's just mm-hmm. about what we love it and this term is is very emotional and it makes people feel something i'd say 80 percent of people that see it they feel something positive or their mind and their heart starts moving in a positive direction and they start thinking, okay, what do I want to be like? What do I want to do with my life? Or maybe they're like, I don't like where I'm at now and I want to go for it. 20% of people, not for any, you know, different way people think, they don't like it because they think, they either say like, I, I already am somebody or, or, or like, screw that guy, like, or screw that company. They're co- I don't need them or that they're cocky or whatever. And the thing is, usually... When that happens, it's because we're, you know, with the people who are, who always say, I already am somebody, I'm always like, man, it's a, be somebody is about being your best self. It's not about anyone else. It's about doing what you love. It's, if you read all the blog posts that started this whole movement, and it's still what I really believe today. It's like, it's not about setting world records. It's about setting personal best. You know, it's about what makes you happy. And you know what? If no one else likes that, and it's okay because you love it and you got to be true to you. You know, you got to stay true to you. And what's cool is now we're getting a community and you're starting to realize, man, there are other people out there that do love what I love. And if I can surround myself with these positive, passionate people, there's nothing as contagious as that energy of those people around you. They can help me and they can uplift me, you know, but, um, but we, but because we're so passionate and we're always talking about going for it and, we do get that. I mean, trust me, people who have tell us here in Austin, like, hey, I love you guys, but you guys are like a cult. You know? <laughs> Everybody's all wearing black, and, and I wish I could show you guys our complex. You guys got to come visit, because we built a new complex out about 40 minutes outside of Austin on the lake, because one of our main investors is um, actually really blessed. He's one of the best construction entrepreneurs, builders in the city. So he's building our space for us. We're calling it the playground, because you're going to have a fitness gym, you have a motocross track in the back for a mile from the lake, there's basketball, there's skateboarding, there's a graffiti wall where you can paint, there's yoga, there's all these things you can learn right here on our, on our complex. But our, our, our investor is named Fred Tillman. He, he, every time he talks about our place, he calls it the compound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Fred, please, everyone already thinks we're a call. Please call the compound, call it the playground. You know? <laughs> There's a big black gate when you roll up. I mean, it's total compound-ish. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're just about bringing people together. And I remember, I should send you guys a video when we were doing the college tour. I remember him standing up on a box in the middle of the main drag at University of Texas because nobody was really coming to our little booth that we had set up. And I just started talking on a mic about passion. And I, and I just, one of the things I told people was that. Be somebody is the most diverse, open, and inclusive movement in the world. You know, because it's about what we, there, there's no borders, boundaries, countries, cultures, colors, creeds. Like everything is cool as long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting somebody else. You know, and I don't even know if you can see this. I'm gonna try to see if you guys this behind me right there. That says no borders, no boundaries, right there. Very cool. Uh, because. Oh, I think you're over to the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I wanted you guys to see that because when we went on this global street art campaign, we would write no borders, no boundaries everywhere because be somebody's about being inclusive. It's about bringing people in. And, and that's one of the, I think that's one of the things we got to learn. I got to become more aware about is like, hey, sometimes when you have 40 people rolling out in black be somebody shirts, it's intimidating to people. And sometimes people think, oh, I can't. That's a club I can't, I'm not a part of, mm-hmm. and we got to we got to do a better job of making people realize that that's not what we're about. We're about everybody. You know, the shirts the shirts are cool because you, you feel a responsibility when you have be somebody across your chest. Like you can't really be lazy that day. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you can't just be sitting on your ass like you know watching you know TV all day, not getting off your butt when you have be somebody on, on your on your chest. You, you got to get up and go create the next podcast, or you got to go. You know, start painting that painting you always wanted to paint, or or, or bust out your skateboard and, and, and start riding again. Like those are the types of things that happen um, with just the simple word and the simple energy that's behind it. I would love to just transport your um, 
I'm going to call it a compound, haha, <laughs> your playground, yeah. into mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. I, I, I just could see this being so successful with in our city and just, just knowing the people and, and the people surround us and, and their passions and how there were, yeah. there's so many of us just trying to make living, you know, doing what we love. And, and it's, it's, it's an awesome thing in the city. And, and gosh, if you feel like coming up here and building a playground, I'm in. <laughs> but yeah, but it's, it sounds fantastic. If the three of us can manifest that dream together, that would be <laughs> awesome. I would love that. If we have these playgrounds everywhere, that would be a dream. But, you know, even if we don't have the playground, yeah. I know there's so many amazing places in Pittsburgh people can get together and do, do, you know, unleash their passion. And that's what's cool. Like, if you want to teach yoga, do it in your driveway. Do it at the park. You know, mm -hmm. like, you don't need a studio. You don't, you don't need don't need anything but but the, the tool that you might use to unleash your passion whether it's a board whether it's a piano whether it's a video camera mm -hmm. you know whatever it is and the person that you want to share that with and you can think of so many cool ways to do Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think that's yeah. a good point to end it. Wow. By the way, uh, I've I've taken the lead here and added pro wrestling to uh, as a uh, as a passion on Whoa. here, so if anybody wants to join me on there, as people know on this network, I have a lot of pro wrestling work going on. Uh, so, so please join me on that. Put a good photo, or the photo police is going to come after you if it's not a good photo. Is it a, is it a cool photo? Uh, it's a photo Katie took that she transferred to me of a guy dressed as a monkey biting biting a fellow uh, in a hamburger pants. Uh, so I don't know about quality wise if it's up to snuff, but I think concept wise, it won't get mis mistaken for amateur wrestling. It sounds like we should put that on our homepage. That should be our new <laughs> photo. <laughs> Amazing. Hold on, I'll pull it up here in a moment if I can get back to it. Oh, I'm doing all this. I, I was updating my profile and stuff while we're going. I'm like, I, I need to step this thing up while we're talking about <laughs> it. Uh, but there you That's go. Awesome. You are now the OG of pro wrestling in the Be Somebody. Community. That's right. There we go. There it is. Oh, yeah. That would be uh, Space Monkey uh, with Chess Flexor, some friends of the show. And that's uh, Potter in the background as a referee. So. So, so, so swipe it to the left just so you, you can make sure it's working all right. Yep. Looks like I'm there. Wow. Don't delete it now. <laughs> <laughs> swipe right to <and> delete. <laughs> But uh, all, all good. All right. Uh, be somebody. Go check it out. Hey, do you have an ETA for Android? I know our friend, oh, our one friend in the chat room that always joins us. He's an Android guy, and I'm sure he's looking out for this as well. Yeah, uh, man. We everybody's been asking for Android. It, it's actually crazy. I'm sure you guys are seeing it too. The, the the shift now. There's a lot more Android users than I think there was even two years ago. Oh yeah. We're, in, in, we're planning to be there in the fall. So I don't want to commit today. I was about to throw out the exact date, but I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be a little cautious. <laughs> but early fall, we should be on Android. And um, right now, we're a free download on the iPhone. You can also use it on your, your iTouch or your iPad. And, uh, and we're going to be on Android soon. And we're going to do a really cool promotion when we launch Android to kind of make up for lost time with our Android users. Very so we're really cool. Awesome. Go check it out. Be somebody.co. Thank you, Cash, so much for joining us. Thanks a lot, guys. It was yeah, a lot you. of fun. I really appreciate you guys. And I just want to say the video you guys made, and I promise you, I, I'm not exaggerating. When I got forwarded the video you guys made, it, I was smiling the whole time. And then I almost felt like crying out of happiness because the way you guys talked about the app, the way you went through the website, the way you noticed the little details that, like, I, I was hoping somebody would notice, like, my cat, my little cat's paw, you know. All, all <laughs> those things. It was so cool to watch and, and just to kind of be on the sidelines to experience. I really appreciate you guys. I think what you're doing at Awesome Cast is 100% awesome. And if there's anything that we can do at Beat Somebody to help you, please let me know. I'd oh. love to. Awesome. Thank Thanks you so much. much. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, check them out and check us out at awesomecast.net if you've stumbled across us from other means, maybe maybe from, from Be Somebody on, on the app or something, or one of those pictures I'm putting up there. <laughs> uh, you can subscribe to this, The Awesome Chat, or Awesome Cast, our main show where we talk about all things tech, as we did this uh, originally. You never know who's going to end up on the interview after one of those videos, apparently. Uh, and of course, at Sorgatron, at K Dutters as well. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank Thank you to our awesome guest, Cash, and uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network.
Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.